Zeit. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. <laughs> Yeah, welcome to Ross Patterson Revolution, James. Look at you. Where I'm are here. you? Where are you? you? Look like you're in a storage room at Office Depot. <laughs> I'm here. There I'm you somewhere. Are. Yep. Uh, this is the last of the move from North Kakalaki. Uh, you're yes. back in North Carolina. I it, am is happy it, to be. Happy to be. Uh, is it? Is it the last of the move from North Carolina? Uh, yeah. Why? You're the only one with those answers. What do you mean? We ran into a problem with a notary. Yeah. Uh, how, how did that shake out? You know, I don't want to make anybody an accessory. So. What is it? What, what is that? What does that mean? Did you find one? Were you able to find a notary? Yeah, I found. Yep. So it's signed. Mm-hmm. Everything's good to go. We're good to go. I mean, we'll see. I'm sure there's going to be something wrong with something. Yeah, right? I'm sure. I, here's, something wrong with something. Here's here's the phone call that I got on Friday about a notary, right? Um, <laughs> I really want to explore this position of of what a notary does and why this is a goddamn thing in the world these days. Because I, I don't understand it. Um, first of all, any dick off the street can be a notary. Uh, Giorgio. Giorgio's about to show his penis on his OnlyFans page before and after Roman the very, very popular boner pill, which are available at GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros. It is just Giorgio on OnlyFans if you would like to see his wiener for $5, right? Giorgio can also become a certified notarist. Is it, is it notarist or is it just notary? What do we... It's a notary. Notary, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, which, as you know, I'm sure everybody's had to do it at least once in their life. It's just a stamp with a, a, a raised emblem on, the, yeah. the, on, a, on a piece of paper, and that's it. Uh, why that job exists in this world, I have no fucking idea. Um, in, the, in the age of DocuSign yep. and every, I mean, you're wiring money over the internet. Like, we're going to get our money over the internet. Yeah. But I can't sign a document that way. No. Like no. you could send money back and forth, whatever, large amounts. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why any, anyone would want to become a notary. Like, I don't, you don't make either. money. Yeah, you make about thirty dollars. Uh, if that, like, yeah. there's some states that you don't make any money. <laughs> there's some that it's like that you like literally can't take money for it. There's some that's like two dollars a signature. Yeah. It's one of those things that like people still want to do i don't understand um i I don't get it i don't understand it i don't know the 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 people who would want to become it but i can tell you this every notary that i've had to use in this life is basically a hall monitor that is all grown up right mm -hmm. they were a hall monitor in middle school i'm gonna stick by the rules oh no running oh my god you got an extra lunch um those are the people who become notaries in this world and they're all fucking shitty man uh they're all weird and shitty and uh the last one i had to meet um i i met her at some weird office uh that had a bunch of uh uh, alligator heads in it Uh, i think you call them taxidermists right Mm -hmm. um and i was like oh oh are you a fan of uh alligators and they were like well uh yeah just a big fan of taxidermy alligators and i was like awesome man so what are we doing here and, and at, also, I want to point out that this woman that I met with had AIDS. Um, it appeared that she had AIDS and maybe had about two weeks left to live. Uh, Did she or you? That's your speculation. That's my speculation. <laughs> um, because she looked like uh, Freddie Mercury at the end of Bohemian Rhapsody. Not the beginning, like the very end. We were just like, oh, all right. Well, shit's fucked up for you. And this is probably your last time on Earth. Thank God you're going to give me a stamp of a raised emblem on a piece of paper that I'm going to give to somebody else for some other meaningless fucking thing. Why hasn't this job been eliminated in the United States is what I can't wrap my head around. 
I don't know. And it is such a Karen job. And so it's really yeah. hard to find one that's like, you can't find a Stephanie in this job. No, Do you know what I mean? No, 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 like, no. You can't find somebody that's going to be like, uh, uh. Yep. Um, it's like the epitome of Karen. So <laughs> the fact that I could find someone like, uh, is huge. Well, so, the first person you found, because I, I wasn't there in person and I, I, you're not allowed to do it through zoom or right. FaceTime, which every single job in America has now resorted to, uh, leaving their employees at home on, on FaceTime and zoom, uh, to do their fucking job. You can't do that with a notary. You've got to be there in person COVID or not. Did you tell her I had COVID? Uh, symptoms. Yeah, and what'd she say? But what'd she say about that? Oh, thank you, thanks. Uh, which one? The first one or the second one? Oh, you went to two. Uh huh. You don't say. So the first one came out like we told her the deal. Da da da. She's someone that we drink with. Lives next door. She came out with a book. Uh, uh, it says right here that yeah. I I go. I know it says right there. Yeah. That's the point like yeah. <laughs> either you're fucking cool or you aren't like that was the first fucking thing i said all when i'm looking for notaries this is what i do i call up the notary and i say hey man are you cool yeah do you, you know what i mean do you do coke I, do i'm, I'm do just gonna coke? start that's what i'm gonna by the way that's what just what i'm gonna start asking people now in real life of like hey man have you ever done coke in this life if so chances are you're cool and we're probably going to be friends if you haven't, 100%. you live in the fucking dark ages and I'll never, I don't even care if you don't like it. I'm not a big fan of Coke, right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want you we've to all be tried doing it. it. Yeah, I don't want you to be yeah. doing it currently, but if you've ever done it in your life, mm -hmm. right? Or like you used to smoke cigarettes or you've done mushrooms one time, like yeah. you can be my notary. Otherwise, we're not going to, this isn't going to work, bro. You know what I mean? No, it's definitely not going to work. So- <laughs> So what the, uh, this was a neighbor of ours that you knew. Uh, she said no. She full Karen out and said full no. Full Karen. And, she came uh, out. She came out with the book, highlighted the part where it says oof. she can't. Da 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 da. I go. I know you can't. Da 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 da. By the way. Yikes. It says right here. I'll have a felony. Yeah. I'll have a felony. I was like, join the club, bitch. We all have a fucking felony. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. You can. You can pretty much bet all money on the fact that she's probably never listened to the song wet ass pussy because that would be yeah. a, little, a little too much for her in this world so sure she's out i was unaware that you went to a second one um mm -hmm. what what was that like well <laughs> i don't think we should talk about it anymore to be totally honest with no you. <laughs> i want to because I'll, I'll get to no, this we I'll, can't we can't i'll get we to can't. where i'm going with 100 percent though we can't i'll say the this second doesn't one, air until you come back Cares. I know. I'm just saying the second one was cool. Let's say that. Oh, so you got it done. Yeah. Okay, the great. One, the great. second one was cool. So I'll tell you my experience on my side then, right? As, okay. I, as I called the realtor and I was just like, hey, again, it was a meaningless document of like, hey, you're doing this or whatever. Your house doesn't have fucking AIDS in it or whatever. Ghost or whatever the fuck it is, right? Something stupid. Right. So I called my realtor and I was like, hey, man, how long have you been a realtor for? Oh, man, I've been a realtor for fucking 20 years or whatever, right? Sure. Great. You don't have a fucking notary? No, man, I don't know any. And I'm just like, it's Look, it was the bro. class. We've always called it the Wilmington Way there mm -hmm. in that town. It is beautiful. I love it. I would be more than happy to retire there in Carolina Beach or Curie Beach and live out the end of my days there. I love it. It is a beautiful city, and I miss it. I really do. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. However, I do not miss the work ethic of that entire city. Uh, we've always called it the Wilmington Way where everybody's just like, man, because it's so beautiful and you're on the ocean and you're on the intercoastal, everybody's just got one foot in that boat already at four yep. o'clock. Um, yep. Four oh, o'clock, the try, work stops. Try three. Yeah, yeah, probably. Probably. But then you also have to pack up stuff before that. So it's around two. You know yeah, I mean? of course of course you gotta you gotta put beers in the cooler <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. we're gotta, gonna knock off around two every day you gotta do the whole thing and like look i know every city's different um the the states where i have lived in in my life where it, it is not different like la is a uh, fuck you want to talk about a lazy town jesus christ um to put it in perspective los angeles doesn't even the city itself does not get started until 10 30 in the morning 
agents, managers, lawyers, all that stuff. Don't even think about getting into the office until 10 Mm -mm. and then cracking open the old laptop till about 1030. So you can bet your bottom dollar that you're not getting a fucking phone call before 1035. If that, if that in the morning and then at at night at 559, they are out the door. So if you don't hear back from whoever you needed to hear back by by 559, that's it. You're not getting them and lunch. Don't even get me started on the fucking two hour lunches, right? So total in a day of, of Los Angeles employees, you're probably looking at four and a half hours uh, total. Um, Wilmington, meh, very similar, but for different reasons. Uh, they're trying to get out of there to go to, on a boat out in the ocean and all that other shit to do fun stuff. Los Angeles, I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know where they go at night or what they do because there's, it's not really, uh, you know, you're, you're real far from the beach at that point. So, you know, unless you're trying to hit an outside fucking mar- marg bar, uh, I, I really don't know what you're doing in LA. Um, the, the hardest working States that I've lived in New York, number one with a bullet, man. I look Obby. when I, when I went to grad there at NYU, uh, you wake up in the morning, bro. If you're out the door at eight, people have already been working since fucking five. Like you're late. Um, you've, you've missed shit. And as soon as you walk out in those streets, um, boom, you're, you're smacked in the face with fucking 2 million people who are busy as shit and you feel worthless. And it makes you work harder living in New York. So that, that, that's number one with a bullet. Ohio. I'll, get, I'll give a, a huge shout out to Ohio. Those motherfuckers do. The Midwest is hardworking motherfuckers, man, who grinds. Like, because it's old school shit, man. It's a, it's a nice, healthy mixture of normal jobs and then like blue collar jobs where it's like, all right, cool, man. Uh, so you're doing shit and uh, everybody's on time. Uh, everybody's getting their work done and all that other stuff. Any coastal city east coast or west coast you're fucked in my opinion like um you're just you can forget it. a beach town forget it ombre forget it and forget it's like- it in a beach town um, yeah but yeah i look man and and when it comes to that if you live in a beach town or a coastal town and you're a notary on top of it holy shit man um i don't get it uh, I really don't, I get, don't it. get it that like you're not given help to like, um, you know, real employees and real jobs and shit. But for you, for notaries, you're going to trust some stranger in a neighborhood that probably strangle baits to fucking 365, which I watched last night. Um, I watched that. Uh, oh, did Je- you? Jesse, I did. I popped it on because I, I wanted to. Why? Oh, it's, <laughs> this is an awesome story. Why? So. Okay. We just moved here, right, to Austin, Tejas. Um, finally got the kind of things working in the house, cable and all that other stuff, right, and the TVs. I And kind, kind of is the op- optimal. Yeah, word. it's the optimal word there. But uh, uh, in our bedroom, I, I had yet to, I guess, turn on that television and physically use it myself because um, usually you're in there earlier than, than I am, right? I mean, calm down about my partying, okay? Sure, 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 sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, anywho, but yeah, I've, I'm in there. I'm yeah. In there. yeah, so <laughs> I, that was the first time I had turned on Netflix in our bedroom, right? Sure. Usually, we're doing it for other, using the bedroom for other things. Ooh. Um, I turned on like Netflix. Eating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and having a half glass of red wine. Yeah, eating. Uh, <laughs> I turn on Netflix, and it's your brother's account that pops up. Okay. It was Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay it was ben's account right and so it was ben and your mom so i don't yeah i know your mom was here visiting so i don't know if she had used it or whatever right, right? but uh right. i got a hearty chuckle out of it and your brother just had a baby ben you know sure so sure. i'm sure him and his wife are gonna be uh kind of turning in early probably watching a lot of netflix so i thought to myself what a hilarious thing to do than watch 365 the pornography on netflix and have that pop up as the first video when they get home from the hospital oh good you rated it with you the put baby it on your list oh not only yeah. that but but <laughs> here's the thing because i i saw what i needed to see as far as like the graphic nudity and shit yeah, like the, I mean, the story whatever. is terrible shot really well i'll give them sure. that um and uh homeboy was really skull fucking that girl which uh was real nice where i was just like right, all right cool right. Like I, I appreciated the graphic nature of the the sex scenes. It was a step up from Skinamax, but let's face it, it's not Pornhub or X videos. Um, mm-hmm. 
But, but with that, after I saw the, 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 the very first sex scene and I got the gist of what was going to go down, I made sure to fast forward all the way through. So that way, when it pops up in his queue and, she, and his wife is going to be like, yo, what the fuck were you watching? Who's going to watch this? And then yeah. when you pull it up, the entire thing has been viewed. So like I scrolled all the way to the end. So that way it looked like he had watched the entire movie all the way up and through the credits. And I even stopped like 10 seconds into the credits. So that way she knew that he had definitely watched the entire thing. And then the credits right. would pop up like 10 seconds in of like, holy shit, you watch this like a real goddamn movie. What's your problem? Um, yeah. Who has time for that right now? We have a newborn. Yeah. I can't watch a movie. And then it starts like the whole fight. And I'm really happy that you, <laughs> that you didn't send a gift to them. No need. But that was my sent, gift. You sent a gift to yourself via them. And it's one of those that you like to do where <laughs> you're not there for the payoff. Like, why do you play jokes where you're not there for the payoff? I don't get it. I love it. I just love to know that it's out into the world. It's the same same reason I used to tape a pound of shredded boar's, boar's head turkey meat in my pants and uh, just keep it there, just t- taped to my leg. That way I sure. had my own secret throughout the day. And okay. I wanted this to be my own secret. So, like... He'll never be able to figure it out. And then maybe two years, like we'll wait two or three years, right? The kid will be two or three at that point. He'll be able to go to a restaurant. Uh, We'll go to a restaurant in Ojai and then we'll sit down and be like, hey, Ben, what'd you think of that movie? That 365 movie on Netflix. You saw it, right? (laughs) You saw it. (laughs) Right in front of his wife. Oh, Um, God. And then I'll finally It's a long game. Yeah. That's a long game. I love shit like that. I love Love a long game. Long game jokes. And uh, it's going to make me laugh forever until we have that meal in three years with, you know, his family. And and then I tell them that I did that. Um, So I'm pretty stoked about it. I'm pretty Pretty stoked stoked about about it. it. (laughs) Pretty stoked about it. Um, You know, I'm I'm happy for you. And I feel bad for, for him or anyone else that gets in your path. I appreciate but, uh, that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Speaking of which, um, there was a, a, a trend that was going on over the weekend. Uh, James Woods. James Woods was trending over the weekend on Twitter, like number two. And I was like, all right, he hasn't been in a movie in fucking 10 or 15 years. Like, yeah, what's he doing? Reason why he hasn't been in movies is uh, he's super Republican. Um, he was. Yeah, he was but one we the- remember we remember that. Right. He was writing. He he had a couple tweets that got him in trouble, but it was nothing. Correct. He was only in support of administration, right? Mm-hmm. And so he's pretty much done. Luckily, he's uh, he made a lot of money and was was very very smart about his money. Doesn't have to worry about shit, so he doesn't care. So he just keeps tweeting on Twitter, and it's it's really funny. Now I want to preface this by saying James Woods in real life is a piece of shit. Um, sure. I know a, f- a few people who have dated him, and how do I? I it was never anything underage or ba- or terrible with him. However, if you were 23 years old, let's just say you were too old for James Woods. Got and, it. And uh, he likes he likes that yayo, son. He likes that blow, and uh, maybe and he, and he loves threesome. Maybe he should become a, a notary. <laughs> maybe he might. Uh, to be honest, well, no, he does coke, so he's not. He's he's cool. He's not a snitch. He's not a fucking snitch. I um, think I'm going to study to be one. Well, it's good luck. It's easy. Yeah, I was going to say, what is it going to take you a half hour to, to, to learn yeah. how to do that? How to stamp a form and look at somebody? Um, right. Carry on. So with that, uh, whenever somebody's trending like that, I thought he died. I was yeah, like, number, exactly. Number two is way too high on that list to not be dead on Twitter, <laughs> unlike the trends where you're like, oh, did you fucking die? Um, right. and, and it was, no, it wasn't. He had posted something that I've bitched about for two years on this show. And he said, hey, guys, on Twitter, because I've been blocked so many times and shadow banned and reported and all this other shit. He goes, because the left is completely controlling Twitter and all of the trends and everything else that is going on right now. Here's what I'd like you to do um, that I heard from somebody else, and it will help you and your algorithm. Um, So he goes, type in the hashtag resist um, at the search bar on Twitter when you go into the feed. Now, for, for the, the first 20 people that pop up with a hashtag resist, obviously you're going to be fucking you know, far left people who just hate the president and everything else. And he goes, now I know you don't know them and you're probably not friends with them. Block them. 
Just block them and it will change the algorithm. And he goes, just start your day and block 20 of them per day and it will change your algorithm on Twitter. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. so Travis Tritt, the country singer who I, I do like, um, uh, I love Travis Tritt. O old school Travis Tritt's really fucking hard to beat, uh, in right. my, my opinion, country star wise. God damn, sure. dude. He's, you want to talk about hits? That motherfucker's got hits for days. I, I'm a big Travis Tritt fan. Um, anyways, uh, Travis Tritt retweeted it and said, dude, this works, man. And I did it, and uh, I can't believe it. Shout out to James Woods for doing this. Um, oh, my so, God. Yeah, so I was like, all right, well, I'll, I'll fucking give this a go, right? So I start, I start to I press the hashtag uh, resist. I type that in on Twitter in the search bar. Um, I go through the first 20 accounts that pop up who have put resist either in their uh, profile because a lot of people put it in their profile or just in normal tweets, right? I deleted about 20 of them and then the screen stopped for me. And I was like, man, yeah. that's, that's weird. Um, uh, and so I kind of left my phone, uh, like put it away, came back like an hour later. And I noticed because I, again, I, you listen to the show, you're, if you're a long time listener, you know how much I bitch about this, of why I'm seeing these people's tweets in my feed all day long. It's because Bette of this. Midler, yes. fucking Alyssa Milano. Correct. It's because of this algorithm that they're pushing um, because they, they, they hate the president and everything else or so whatever. Well, I noticed the algorithm slowly start to change and I was seeing other things and I was like, shit. So I, I went back in, pressed it again, put, wrote in hashtag resist and blocked 20 more people. Um, and I did this throughout the, the course of the weekend, kind of whenever I had a free moment. And um, I, it has completely changed my algorithm. Um, the oh my other, gosh, it's changed your life. Not my life. I, here's the thing. Because <laughs> the sad thing is I enjoy Twitter for the news. Um, the, it is the fastest news source there is. And you're able to find out things about uh, people, places, events, all that other stuff quicker than you can anywhere else. And, uh, and I enjoy it for that fact. I don't enjoy the fact that it's controlled politically. I hate that because I think it is a great utility and a great utility app. Therefore, I I'm pissed that somebody else controls this and they've got their own agenda because for the news, it's as good as you can get, in my opinion. Yeah. All they have to yeah. do is block the bots from like Russia and all this other shit. And if you don't think you they know where, where all of this shit is coming from, Bro, they've got more data on every single person in the world than anybody, them and Google. So fuck off with the lies. Um, but as I went through it, uh, I, I noticed that like more and more, I, I was seeing less and less of these posts. Uh, more and more of these people were out there. And then somebody else replied. They were like, hey, man. Uh, no, it was, it was James, Wood who, James Woods who replied later on. And he just said, um, uh, he goes, isn't it amazing what has changed in your algorithm? And he goes, uh, let these people who you've blocked, since it is all left and that's all you're seeing anyways, and everybody else from the right is shadow banned, more than likely until this election's over, or probably not because Trump's going to win. Um, mm -hmm. But he goes, let them live in their own echo chamber. So that way, when they're sending out all of these, this crazy shit, the only people who are going to read it and respond to them are the people that have the same hashtags and beliefs that they do. And the more and more I thought about it, I was like, well, shit. That's exactly what I was saying of like with with Trump on the other side where I was like, you know, he sucks up the news cycle 24 hours a day. Trump does. What happens if you just didn't respond to anything he said? And I think that's when Joe Biden was kind of winning this election early on is because he was hiding in a basement and he didn't respond to anything Trump said. And it was just like mm -hmm. there was kind of no way to get to Biden with that. And it was like, well, what happens if you live all alone in an echo chamber? I just saw the effects of it, uh, the effects of it over a weekend, and holy shit, I gotta say it's refreshing. And when I go on there, there's less hatred towards other people because I'm not seeing that shit anymore. Now, will Twitter go back in and and figure out what James Woods has done and change this algorithm? Maybe, but I, I can at least say this for a three day experiment, it's pretty fucking amazing. Um, I don't know right, how he like, found out about it, but yeah, weird, you're, right? Uh, you're like living like me. Right. Mm -hmm. You're living like me a little bit where you're like not seeing the shit that you don't want to see. And you're kind of like popping on and looking at the uh, stuff that you do. Yeah. And, and the, like the stuff that was popping up for me was like Ohio State stuff or things, movies, things that I like. Finally, shit that like I, I have actual yeah. interest in. And I was like, God damn, this is what I want this app to be. Um, but to do that, you have to go through and 
annihilate some algorithm to get to that. And uh, that's the shitty part about it. Or maybe it's like I, the other part about it was like maybe it's me because I'm an actor and like or in a writer where they're like, oh, man, he must be liberal. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, so uh, I'm not sure. But um, and I mean, that's a good comment about media in general, right? Like they the way that they talk to people, the things that they say, Hollywood, media, whatever, mm-hmm. is they're just a, they just assume that. I mean, you hate Trump, right? Like, they yeah. can't believe that there is anyone out there that doesn't, right? If yeah. you're in LA, anyone that talks to you, they just they just assume. I mean, there's no possible way, right? Mm-hmm. That you could actually you didn't I mean, nobody voted for him, so. And so it's this it's just the continuation of that, right? When they're giving you information, whether it's on the news or Twitter, mm-hmm. that it's coming from their own bias because they themselves, anyone that's in that is liberal right you're just like me yeah you have to be just like me because there's no possible way that there's anyone different yeah and uh you're gonna see a lot of things change here coming up over the course of the next year because of all of this shit um i had a conversation on friday night um late with a buddy of mine who i would say is probably pretty close to a-list at this point certainly in television um yeah, I yeah, I as far as TV goes wise, like I, I would say he's pretty close to A list. Uh, you know him as well. Um, okay. anyways, he uh he was asking me about Texas. He had called to ask me about Texas and what I if I like liked it or not, and and what the real shit was on Texas, right? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, well, I was like, what's up? And he's like, um, I'm thinking of moving there. Um, I'm thinking about getting what? out of L A. and whatever. And uh, and he goes, yeah, I he goes, you know, I've he's done fuck man three or four series that have gone years and years and years he's a, he's a, a, a gajillion dollars and i was like okay, why i know who you are well, i was like why the sudden call now right um and he goes uh he goes you know i had he had just come back from a dinner with a casting director a huge prominent casting director that he's been friends with for years and you know look casting director's success is also an actor's success. If you're a casting director who finds a great actor who goes on to do a bunch of shit like that forever and ever and ever, you're the one who found him and it helps get the casting director more jobs and then the actor more jobs. It's a win-win if you put the right actor in the right project. And she just sure. said, look, man, I, I want to be honest with you because I'm, there's some projects that are coming down the line that you, you and your agent are going to call me about and I can't put you in them. Um, and uh, it was like, why? And he goes, look, uh, you're a white man in his in your 30s and uh we're we're not casting that for <laughs> probably three years at this point so forgive me all of these things you're going to read that you're probably right for that i would i would have put you in like and he goes i want to have an honest conversation with you because i love you you've been very good to me and vice versa over the years and i don't want you to think that i don't like you anymore or mm-hmm. that our relationship has changed it is the business has changed and uh, we are going to have to show diversity towards everything. And he goes, a lot of these scripts aren't written like that. They will be rewritten like that. And he goes, that's what's going to happen. So he goes, I apologize. But he goes, I also wanted to give you the heads up of this is what you're going to encounter over the next two to three years until everything kind of settles down or dies down. And uh, mm-hmm. take, take what you will with this advice. And I was like, shit. I mean, it was yeah. sobering, but it makes sense. Um, you know. It's a scary time for people raising uh, white boys. You know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared for their future. If they're an entertainer. Scared when they yeah. walk out the door. No, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, I mean, gosh, what's going to happen to them? <laughs> no, I know. But they're not going to go. They're not going to go into entertainment. No, like, they're it, just not. It, they're not going to go. Just or not. just do it on your own, like YouTube. Because he had called me and was just like, "Hey, man." what if I just started making my own stuff? And I was like, look, there's a lot of people that are doing it right now. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. fuck, even Kevin James has a goddamn YouTube channel right now. And I was like, oh, all right, well, shit. Um, I just think you're going to have to start doing your own material and then uh, holding ownership of it or a podcast or something else along those lines. But uh, yet it, it is dramatically going to change. And um, it's starting with, uh, there's a festival going on. The, the very first film festival is back um in a couple weeks here there's venice film festival not in california the one in italy uh because i guess italy's got everything figured it figured out so 
Uh, very prestigious. Yeah. Very prestigious. And uh, they're switching all their awards to genderless now. For, uh. for acting and, uh, uh, and all that stuff. So it's just going to be best actor. And it's, you're going to be men versus women and all this other shit. And uh, they were asking Bradley Cooper about that. By the way, th- that's the end of award shows. Like, as soon as that hits America, that's over. Um, no one's going to care. They interviewed Bradley Cooper and asked him what he thought about award shows and all of this shit over the mm-hmm. weekend. And he was like, it's utterly fucking useless, was his exact words. Well, I heard that story. And it's not fair to shut the door behind you once you've won. Has he won? No. And that's the thing. He never won? No, he never won. <laughs> Shit, you're right. <laughs> he never he won. Like Meryl Streep, right? Meryl Streep being like, oh, correct. No more award shows. I've won all of the awards, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bradley uh, Cooper was like, okay. Uh, he hadn't won, and he was doing an interview with uh, one of the black cast members from uh, Hamilton, who is probably going to be nominated this year for something, right? Because uh, the rules mm-hmm. have changed for the Golden Globes and the Oscars this year, where you don't have to be in a theater because of COVID and all that shit. So you're going to get be able to nominate streaming movies and actors and actresses from those. Spielberg. Spielberg's yeah. going to kill himself. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> What's he going to do? <laughs> What's he going to do? He is going to come out. I will tell you that. Maybe yeah, not. Matt. If it's a COVID thing, maybe not. But he signed a huge deal with Apple for TV. So uh, fuck him. He's going to come out. A, he's going to come out as gay, probably. Right. Ah. Like he's going to piss him off so bad. Maybe that he's going to be like. I'm gay. I'm gay. Fuck you guys. I'm gay. And I'm moving to Tom Hanks <laughs> Island. You know, find a chopper and find me. Um, yeah. uh, <laughs> anyways, this, this black actor in Hamilton was just like, uh, he got nominated for something like early on, like, you know, some like precursor to whatever these award shows are going to be. And, uh, and they were asking him about it and he goes, you know, I, uh, I feel like I deserved it. You know? Um, ah, there's ah, ah. 30, 50 people in Hamilton and he goes, yeah, my performance was better than all of theirs. So, um, it was really funny and self depreciating or whatever. And then that led Bradley Cooper to be like, you know, all okay. this shit is fucking utterly useless. He was just like, Got it. you know, he goes, man, when I was making like a star is born and all this other shit, like the last thing on my mind was an award. And he goes, the reason why I got into filmmaking and, um, uh, all, all of this shit was not because of an award it was because of the artistic expression that i wanted to make and he's just like you know you take a star is born everybody was like dude you lost he lost for that you know he lost best director and i think best picture it lost which is crazy to me because it definitely should have won best picture um and i believe he was nominated for best actor as well and lost that as well the only thing that won from that movie was the song uh lady gaga for who uh, ended up do we know who won can you look that up for best picture that year yeah, you probably know off your off the top of your head. Uh, against <laughs> Star is Born, remember? Yeah, was it uh, the Moonlight thing? Um, was that what no, it was? No, remember or, that uh, was. You're not talking about the the eight. It wasn't Parasite, right? Parasite, right? Is that who won? Is that would be a Star is Born though, Giorgio? I don't know if it. It was the year before. Look, look it up, Giorgio, and uh, and let me know. But just um, because, just because this is he is right. This is the shitty thing about award shows. Whatever Giorgio tells me, like, who won, uh-huh. is that a movie that you pop on no matter what every time you see the picture? Like, probably not. No. I don't know what it is, but. No. I, yeah. Look, look it up, um, Giorgio. Uh, a Star is Born nominated Oscar against. Um, Any who's. Uh, he was like, dude, I didn't think anything about that. And, you know, when that movie was getting made, I remember nobody wanted to make it. The studio didn't want to make it. No. Oh, The, the Shape of Water one? what yes that's right that's right that uh, movie i remember no. seeing a gratuitous nude scene in that at the beginning of it and i thought it was weird homegirl was really good uh it's an odd movie but um you yeah, would never I, you would never would watch never, it again nope you would never nope. pop it on no stars born is a movie that i will be watching like forever forever, forever. it's a great it's a great film that version anyway yeah but go ahead. um which was the best version in my opinion but uh i've seen all of them so yeah, yeah, I, I I didn't like the I know I'll I'll she'll be throwing the wolves on this one, but I didn't like the Barbara Streisand one maybe because I hate her now, so eh, right is what it is. I think people would agree with you on that one. Um, but yeah, but uh, you know, and he was like, dude, I, I don't you that you don't go through the filmmaking process thinking about this and also the shit. 
And then at the end, you get to these award shows and then tell, somebody tells you that your art is better than someone else's art. And he's like, it is all subjective. Therefore, these awards are fucking utterly useless, which is true. Therefore, I predict with this Venice Film Festival thing and MTV Movie Awards is already doing this genderless bullshit. And it's like 90 people in a category. I, I, I think the award shows will be wiped out completely um, within five years. Because if we're going in that direction, it means that we can't even say that one person is even better than the other. Because right. the direction that we're going, which I think is what you're going to talk about, but the you know participation trophy world, mm -hmm. like we don't want there to be winners and losers. We don't want people to be upset or offended. Uh, it, that's definitely, if we keep going the way we're going, that's the way the entire world is going to be, right? Yeah. From, so From soccer to award shows everything. to a job, college, like all of it. All of it. So uh, just to g give you guys a heads up of what, what you get to expect here in the coming years, that's what's going to happen with all this shit. And, uh, you know, the fact that Bradley Cooper came out and said it was pretty ballsy because um, let's face it, that guy, any, everything he does is typically nominated these days. So Nominated, it, it makes the most money. Yeah. People love it. Critically acclaimed. Fills the theaters like he it, he is absolutely right. And if anyone can speak to it, I it's think him. it's him. Right? Yeah, I did, too, um, because you look at I'll just look at the last few movies that he's done. Like uh, you have a star is born, which I loved American Sniper, which I fucking loved. Um, God damn, he was good in that. Uh, like, dude, that's a that's a movie that's right. You know, uh, Star is Born yeah. has nothing to do with with anything. Nobody wanted to make that fucking thing. And uh, mm -hmm. that's a dude who's just making trying to make the best films without any prejudice or anything else that's going on. So if he's coming out and saying it's bullshit, wait for yeah. the rest of it. And uh, oh, yeah. the elephant man. I mean, he played the elephant man well, with no makeup or prosthetics. That, I mean, that's a uh, that's that, that is one strike we're going to give to uh, one Cooper. strike we're going to give him. But when you say there's certain actors that say like, <laughs> I just got into it for the love. You know, I just the craft. I don't want to be famous. I don't believe them. When right. Bradley Cooper says it for some reason, I just believe it. He's such a it's fucking true. actor. Yeah. Like he probably talks about it all the time. That's all he He's thinks probably about. A dork. He's always working on his craft. Yeah. His craft, yeah. right? Yeah. So I believe him. I believe him, and he's absolutely right, and we've all known it forever, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, next up here, I want to I want to chat about uh, your girl. I uh, so I hate I hate the Real Housewives of everything. Obviously, we've been talking about right. that uh, forever. Whenever I come home, it is on, um, and. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was surprised to see Denise Richards on one of these things. And, uh, man, I, I, I'm not sure what, what has happened to her. Um, mm -hmm. But she looks like she is going through all of the things. Like, And I'm, I'm assuming the Charlie Sheen thing had a lot to do with it. But uh, uh, her life mm -hmm. and everything else that's going on to her. But um, uh, when I walked in, uh, first of all, I was surprised to see Denise Richards on my television screen. Uh, secondly, right. I was surprised to see her clap in front of camera and say, bravo, bravo, bravo. I, I didn't I understand. Had... Like, that's the name of the network. And I didn't, I didn't understand what's right. going on. And I'm asking you, tell, can right. you tell the audience what that is and what's going on? Because I'm sure they watch it. I just, for dudes out there, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I don't think anyone really that listens to the show watches. There are a couple, my girls, yeah. have maybe watched some of it. But uh, this, so this show's 60, 40 the, dudes and girls. Right. Right. So the being a housewife, I think people have found out uh, being a real housewife on the Bravo network. I think people have found out makes you quite a bit of money. Like you you film all day long, all the time, your entire life up into a reunion and you get a hiatus. Right. So and you make quite a bit. Right. 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 And so these women are sort of finding that out. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the right place and you know the right people, you get introduced on the show. So now there's a lot more actors that are coming into the reality world, which I don't like, you know? Well, because again, don't, buckle up. It, yeah, because so yeah. you're saying Denise Richards, like she's treating it like a movie set. Like she's able, she thinks she's able to tell people uh, to edit stuff out. <laughs> don't record this. Uh, stop filming. Like you can't do that. You sign a contract, right? Yeah. 
And if you want to get paid, you, you don't get to do that. But someone help, someone told her, I don't know if it was someone on the show or someone playing a prank on her or someone that was very in, uninformed told her if she doesn't like something, you know, that's going on or a direction that a conversation is going, she can say, bravo, bravo, bravo to all the cameras uh-huh. and that they'll have to take that part out. Cut to the entire season of <laughs> Denise Richards is her, all her footage, right? Nothing is cut out, but it's all, <laughs> every episode, every dinner, everything is Denise Richards just going bravo, bravo, bravo. And then continuing to roll all the way into the bathroom. They leave her mic on. They like everything. Oh, that's so great. That's great. You just can't. It's a different realm. Like these bitches, Lisa, Lisa Renna was the other fairly, you know, famous person on it. Yeah, she's and married. She, is she married to Harry Hamlin? Yes. Okay. Um, And she was like the last famous person and she she fell in line. But I think in the beginning, she was very much like, I'm an actress. You gals are like lucky to do, you know, this this network is lucky to have me. Sure. Uh, cut to and especially COVID times. Look, bitch, the real housewives are are killing it still. They're filming. They're doing it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're making a shit ton of money and it's constant work if you could just figure your shit out. So, you know, Denise Richards, although I will say about her, too, like if you dated Charlie Sheen mm-hmm. for that long during all of that. She is not the mo- the super innocent gal you guys think she is. Do you know what I mean? Well, look, n- none of us She's a- got ever some shit going none on. None of us ever thought Denise Richards was super innocent. So let's. Let's leave but it. At what that. did we think? Like, let's think back to that time of her, like Charlie Sheen and all the shit he was like, quote unquote, doing to her. Didn't we think as a country like or people that are watching the, you know, entertainment news, weren't we yeah. like, oh, my gosh, poor Denise. Right. Well, no? sort of. And, and, and so because I, I was thinking about that um, when they got together, he was riding high on two and a half men. He was yeah. making a million dollars an episode and people love two and a half men. People love Charlie Sheen. Like he was, yeah, uh, he was doing great. Um, right. He was doing great in life. And uh, it, the, the, the crazy part about it was when he got with Denise Richards, it was like, Oh, all right, cool. I, I guess you're normal. Yeah. yeah. I, did, I didn't really think anything of it. Here's what I thought me personally, when they got married was well, he's fucking crazy and does a bunch of Coke and parties and has sex with a bunch of people, right? The prostitution thing was known at that point. Um, so we mm-hmm. didn't know that. Um, and he always made a joke about it. But with him marrying Denise Richards, I was like, I always viewed her as kind of like a Pamela Anderson. Which we, she knew the gig, yeah. right? She knew what she was getting married to. So I was like, oh, well, she must like to have threesomes too and do, do blow and uh, sure. it's probably just a, a fun, a good fucking time, right? Now, minus the AIDS, uh, that probably would have worked out. They probably would have continued their fucking madness together, right? Uh, but he blew his job, um, blew up his life, and uh, subsequently blew up hers as well. And right. I think that's the Denise Richards that we're left with, where she was a good time gal having fun, and then it all came crashing down uh, with Charlie Sheen, as as it typically does with anybody who's doing coke and prostitutes so- that late in life. So the problem with that is when you're trying to clean up your or if you're you're trying to maintain that you are a wholesome person that just got fucked over, mm-hmm. when you get on a reality show, people start kind of bringing up things from the past, like her threesomes and her shit yeah. and things that she did. And she is bravo, bravo, bravoing all over the place. And it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. And Denise none of that. Richards, um, it, yeah. It, my advice to Denise Richards is we know. And none of us cared. And it actually, right. fuck, man. If she just went with all of it, like. Right. Yeah, it would be so cool. Yes. She'd be People fucking don't rad. Understand that. She'd be like, a, a cult have, hero. Yeah. Like, you have a nice house in Malibu. You've got a hot husband now. Your kids are fine. Like, just talk about. That's what I always say. Like, it makes you a little bit more interesting. So yeah. Be fucking cool. And like, be cool. Like most of us, like uh, as kids, our first fucking sex scene was Denise Richards in Wild Things in that shower, and you know, Nev. and Nev, Nev dude, Campbell. and it was Nev. like, dude, yeah. 
you yes let everybody live that fantasy of denise richards like dude be crazy do threesomes do coke like that's what we wanted and hoped for all along and the fact that you were actually that person would have made you even more likable so you know right somebody should have sat her down and said look man this is who you are ride that train she could be way richer than she is now just from doing yeah. that shit i've been like hey yeah yeah i had a threesome i fucked that girl on the show people would be way down with and that and by the like, way yeah. like by the way, she would stay on the show. She would make more money. She would bump up salary every year. Like, if you play your cards like that and mm -hmm. you become a dramatic, like, accessory to the show, like, you will make money. Paper, son. Straight cash, homie. And no one has more drama than Denise Richards. Like, let's go. Yeah, let's go, dude. Saddle up, Denise. Get your shit together. I uh, hate people that you know are fucking cool and weird and then just like don't fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, then they're not or cool. Or just and trying yeah. to be boring. Yeah, exactly. Like, why would you try and be boring? Oof. Get, I mean, just live up to who you are. You, you'll be happier. You'll make a lot lot more money. Uh, speaking of money, I do. speaking of money, we got some fucking people that pay for this show to be on the air. Ghostbed.com you know forward slash drinking bros. I know what. What's up? You know the deal. I got to check on my kid really quick, but I'll be back for Strike Force. For sure. Hey, you pack those pillows, right? From from Ghost Bed. Bro. All bro. right. Just making sure. I told the guy, I told the guy at the at the UPS, I'm like, I don't care what it costs. Yes. It's worth it. Yes. And he was like, okay, so I think he double triple charged me, but I said whatever. It's cool. No, nah, those ghost pillows are the best on the planet. You can go check on the on the boy. Uh, ghostbed.com okay, forward slash drinking bros has got all your mattress needs that you need right now in this life. 30% off is the bundle package deal that is going on for Labor Day. That is 30% off of everything. Ghost beds, uh, pillows, sheets, adjustable bases, ghost pillows, um, you name it. There's a 30% bundle package at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros for Labor Day. Now, if you're a member of the military, a first responder, uh, a teacher or you work in the government, uh, you get 30% off of everything in the entire store already. Um, and as always, they got a 36 month pay as you go program, no interest there. So uh, if you're looking to get one of those deals, you're probably thinking, dude, I, I can't get the 36 month pay as you go program. Yes, you actually can. And uh, it'll knock it down to like 35 bucks a month. I have the adjustable base now, um, a down, a downsize for the big, the big guy downsize from a, from a cow king to a king. And uh, I got the adjustable base, and holy shit, it's the greatest thing of all time, and now I can't live without it. Um, it's like being in a, in a hospital bed that you control uh, with a remote control, except you aren't all fucked up in a car accident. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today and uh, get on it. Be about that ghost bed life. It will change your life. I can promise you that. There's nothing better than a great night's sleep. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shablanker. Shablanker. Four amazing flavors. Uh, grape, orange, orange, and lemon, dude. Uh, lasts longer than five-hour energy. No carbs, no sugars. And uh, comes in a tasty, tiny little tin pouch. You rip it open and squeeze it into any liquid available. Works like a dream, like a like mother a squeeze. What were you trying? Like you a rock. Yeah. Oh, oh like a rock. I got to go. Uh, go Strikeforceenergy.com today. Promo code revolution. Get you 20% off there. And they ship everywhere in the entire world. Uh, just get a little 10 pack if you're looking to, to try these. Uh, James, you know, who I'd like to get on the show is a uh, ranch water. Dude. Man, uh, so I think we're gonna look into it. We're gonna look into it. I'm talking to Renee. Renee? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they hit me up. So, um, oh, look. nice. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, they just started following me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit them up. Man, I, I don't know if ranch water is like a Texas thing. Um, tell me in the in the in the comment board here on YouTube. Uh, by the way, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to Ross Patterson Revolution on YouTube. Um, I. Uh, We'll I want to say live tomorrow, by the way, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be, be back live, live tomorrow, tomorrow. But I want to say this, I like about the ranch water. I, I, I've seen a couple different versions of it in the grocery store, and I'm not sure which is the real one or which what's like, I, I'm not sure if ranch water has been a thing in Texas. 
like beforehand and now they just canned it like i don't i don't know yet um i don't know what that mm-hmm. recipe is but what i will say is this over the weekend i found one that was 6.9 Ooh. Uh, brother uh, do we want to talk about what right they on time. are yeah or no yeah it's uh it's it's in a can it's tequila uh agave and something else, Jabe. So they have all different ones. Um, there's like Paloma yeah. with like vodka, tequila, uh, no brown liquor. But um, basically, it's a cocktail in a can, but without any preservative type. Yeah, stuff. no, so no it's carbs all and like sugars. Salt. Yeah, yeah, it's like salt, uh, lemon, you know, seltzer water, mm-hmm. alcohol, and maybe like some fresh fruit juice. And it's almost like Spindrift in that they actually use fruit juice for it. Yeah. And it doesn't give you a headache. It's not like every other cocktail that you see in like a pre-packaged thing. No. And, and the surprising part about it is um, uh, it, typically whenever you have like a cans, like liquor like that, anything. Yeah. Um, yeah. It tastes like shit. And usually yeah. the liquor's shitty, but uh, this one's great. And uh, I mean, I've been rocking these lately and I'm a gigantic fan and I have not ever seen those outside of Texas. Never even heard of it. Uh, either way, I'm going to give them a shout out again, not a sponsor. just a, I'm a fan. I was just from one fan, uh, to, to another here. But, uh, uh, the other thing that I was, uh, reading about over the weekend, Javes was, uh, Michael Cohen. He's got a new book out and, uh, coming out. So fun. Boy, he's been, uh, really working on this for uh, a long time in prison, out of prison, <laughs> got put back in prison for it and um sure sure they're making it um and uh it, it's called betrayal or something like that but um the things right. that are coming out of that are, are are absolutely crazy and hilarious uh there is a faux bama in it that is that is really fucking funny a faux um, bama yeah f a u x yeah yeah bama. but like what is it it's a reference? fake obama I okay. guess Trump was shooting, looking to shoot a commercial in like 2015 or 16 when he was running that he was firing Obama from the White House in it. So they hired okay. this fake Barack Obama as an actor or whatever. Right. And uh, uh, it just it, like the, there's a bunch of like excerpts that have been released. That was one of them. And they have this photo of this fake Barack Obama in there. Out of context, it's the funniest goddamn photo of all time um, because it's sure. <laughs> Just like some generic looking dude who they've, they've yeah. made to look like Barack Obama. Um, so it's really fucking funny. But uh, uh, the salaciousness of this book, like just reading the excerpts. Look, I, the, the last one was because uh, I think it was the retard sister or cousin or whatever it was of Trump, Mary, whatever her name was. There's all these cousins, family members, former staffers. Everybody is cashing in on, on book deals for Trump. If you've known Donald Trump, congratulations. You're looking at seven figures. I don't know what Michael Cohen's going to get for this, but I can tell you this is going to make a shit ton of money just reading the ep- excerpts of it. Um, From both sides, right? People just wanting to be like, what is this ridiculousness? Well, sort of. I, there, there's so many people that hate Trump that they just, they can't, they can't consume enough of this. And it's become sure. big business in the book world, right? And uh, uh, one of the stories in there was, uh, they asked him about the N-word in particular. And they said, hey man, there's a lot of people that said if Trump's used the N-word and all this other stuff. And he's just like, look, man, he never used the N-word, but he definitely hates black people. <laughs> and uh, they okay. were like, hey, can you name an example? And he goes, yeah. So, like, you know, um, when he was talking about getting rid of Obama and getting Obama out of the White House and the reason why he was running, I, I, allegedly, and this is according to Michael Cohen, that he turned to him and just said, can you name me one country that is run by a black man that isn't a shithole and on the planet just one and he goes therefore that's why i want to be president i don't know whether to believe any of this shit at all um to be honest with you uh is it funny and hilarious and fun to read yeah i'm sure it will be and i'm sure this guy will make a gajillion dollars will this stop anything that's going on uh no it's not man and all of this fucking weird gotcha journalism and books and all this shit that keeps going on like it's only going to make it worse. Now these people are flooded on television. You've turned it into a full reality show, which is, which is another excerpt that I want to, to bring to light. One of the excerpts that CNN highlighted yesterday was um, uh, by Michael Cohen who said, hey man, um, what we're doing with Trump, like America has, tr- has created Trump. No one else besides the media is personally responsible for Trump being president. 
because it is 24 hour wall to wall coverage of this dude. Therefore, he's going to win. He's going to win again, is what it said uh, in this book. He goes, he's going to get reelected again because all of you guys can't stop talking about him. Now, the irony of this quote that is in this book is he was on CNN saying this and they were covering it, yet bringing him more coverage and more attention. Yep. That is, yep. It is endless. Don't it is they understand that it's name recognition, face recognition. Whenever you go, you just like, right? With anything. No, apparently not. I, I apparently just... not. And and the fear that they are constantly <sighs> trying to put instill into everyone. It, and that's just across the board. That's in real life. If you have somebody that's like always stressed, always telling you about to be careful of this, be afraid of that. And then you run into some dude that's like, bro, don't worry about it. We got this. I'm the shit. That's a little refreshing, right? Yeah. In times of like, everyone else making wanting to make you so fucking scared of everything it's a breath of fresh air i hate to say that about him right but it's a breath of fresh air for someone to be like we're good don't worry about it you know what i mean yeah because it, it's That's just nice to hear in uh, life it, it is and it's like dude we're I, again i cannot wait till this election's over we're less than two months away at this point i just want it fucking over with because i'm tired of the shit and, and reading and listening and hearing all this fucking bullshit like, there was a story in The Atlantic that came out over the weekend, which uh, The Atlantic is fucking utter garbage. It's owned by uh, uh, Steve Jobs' alive wife, because he's dead. Are we calling that that? A widower? A wife? Yeah, a widower. Is that word? Is that, uh, is that what we're caling it? <laughs> She's a widower, right? <laughs> oh are you a live wife no i'm a widower like eh, whatever what? whatever she's a, she's the one who's uh, alive he's the one who's dead that um, alive wife <laughs> you're ridiculous carry on <laughs> she owns the atlantic she hates trump she owns the atlantic oh yeah she, she put like, out a we don't, story over yeah. the weekend that trump uh hates the military and then he called all the people that died over there losers and uh something Look. else um the story has been back and forth all weekend like people arguing on both sides or whatever I, the issue i have with this and again with this this election coming up why i just want it over with the all of the sources in the article are anonymous all of mm. the sources for all of this shit are anonymous like no if you're gonna if you're gonna write something that horrific about someone say exactly who the fuck it is and whoever whoever it is that said that stand by your word i, I don't yeah. understand what's so hard about that uh, just stand by your word and say, no, man, I was there. Here's when he said it. Here's when he did this and blah, 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 blah. You don't have anybody. It's anonymous. Yeah, when I heard when I heard that that article was not sourced or on the record, I was like, uh, OK, so it's just a story that you're telling me. It's a fairy tale story at that point. Yeah. Uh, if it, you don't have so sources and no one's on the record, it, it's garbage to me. It's worthless. And, and that's that's all we have left now. And that's that's the media. And like. You know, the Atlantic, I know, is failing, and they're, uh, they don't have much time left on this earth, the Atlantic. Um, <laughs> now clearly, this helps when you just make up shit and say anonymous sources and everything else. The fact that it's legal is kind of crazy to me. Like, but, yeah. you know, um, shit, man. Because um, I, I did a story about the NFL, and uh, if you come up to me in real life, I'll tell you who fucking told me. I'll tell you the GMs that called me, to be honest with you. Um, I don't mm. I don't give a shit. Uh, but but something like this where you're just like, hey, man, what the fuck? What the fuck? Um, I just literally I'm counting down the days. There is somebody has started a timer of days, hours, minutes and seconds until this election. And like literally, man, the drunkest you will see me. And it's hard, man. It's hard to see me real fucked up. It would take like a gigantic bottle of something to do it like a handle of brown liquor to do it we'll be at that election party that we're doing uh november 3rd live it's uh whiskey tango foxtrot foxtrot downtown in downtown austin because it's of, really a sight to see guys you need to see this level of drunk oof. come on down i, come I on think down. i think the people got a taste of it during the election show in 2016 where they were like holy shit ross i've never heard you that fucking plastered uh because yes. uh, i'm able to keep my shit together right um, so th with this one, I, I, I'm going all in all of the shots, all of the things, all of that will be in play on November 3rd for this election. 
because I, I just want it over with. I just I want right. an answer and I want to move on with the next four years of my life. And uh, there's nothing you can do at that point. You can't just keep trying to impeach somebody over and over and over again uh, before people are going to get fed up with it. So uh, I we're shit, man. What are we? Fifty seven days away now. Ugh, let's just get there. Oh my gosh. I know. Let's just get it done. Luckily, we've got some college football to break it up in between. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Jesse will be with us at the live show on Saturday at uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrots here uh, September 12th. That is uh, starting at 1 p.m. So if you were in the Austin area or San Antonio or anywhere else around here, uh, it's free. Come down and rage with us. Uh, beers are beers. You know, they're what, five bucks or whatever it is. But it's uh, free admission. And uh, we're, we're doing a live show for the kickoff of uh, college football weekend. All of our friends will be in town, actually. Um, your friend Brooke will be here. My friend Josh will be here. Josh and Sarah will be here. Uh, so it'll be Jesse and, uh, and Anthony and I. Uh, we're doing a live show. So, so pop on down for that. That's going to be a good time to kick off college football. I'm wearing the, the UT hat because the Big Ten is not playing this year. Therefore, I've adopted uh, the University of Texas as the team that I am rooting for. And uh, you can come on down, be on the show. We'd love to have you. Uh, so when you're in attendance, man, we'll, we'll actually have you on the show and, uh, and have you on Drinking Bros. Um, and you'll get to meet uh, the Jablers in real life. You're going to be stoked, Jabes. The weather's nice. Really? Yep. High of 86. Uh, low, Shut up. Low of 66 that night. So uh, going to be your weather. I could wear a sweater. Yeah, it's a night game. It's a night game. So they're like, uh, you know, should be absolutely beautiful for the game. So that that's nice. I'm looking forward to that. It's been fucking nice. hot as shit here. Uh, not that it's not hot everywhere. Dude, California. L.A. is going through it. Holy shit. Oh, yes. Um, oh, I yes. was not aware. that. So they recorded the highest temperature in L.A. County history over the weekend. 121 degrees. That's not. Where? I don't know. Um, I guess that was that was what the heat index was. And uh, same thing. They're doing those rolling blackouts again where they're shutting down the power grids and everything else. But, um, you know, with the fires that are going on uh, currently and uh, and this heat, man, California is is uh, it's probably going to just melt off into the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. We do have breaking news, though. The, the one of those fires uh, that, that started that burned down seven seven thousand acres. Uh, was actually from a gender reveal party. Yeah, and this has happened before. I can't believe fucking people are doing this. Right? Two, what, wasn't it two years ago? I feel like we did yeah. that story on the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I believe it was a first responder who's... Yes. Who's, yeah. And we, and, and we were doing some raising some funds for him on GoFundMe. But uh, yeah, this was Whoa. a 7,000 acres in uh, San Bernardino was, was a gender reveal party. And lit up the whole goddamn place and that's why california's on fire wild right okay well uh so does <laughs> maybe we should stop with those maybe we should stop with the a gender reveal that could possibly light something on fire <laughs> uh, it's not a great way to start your life with a newborn i'll tell you that owing millions and millions of dollars yep. to the state and uh spend yeah, a little time in the people pokey don't like that mm -hmm. no 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 people don't love that so you know yeah pop a balloon cut a cake don't be a fucking idiot maybe uh change the kid's middle name to debt because that's that's what you're going to be yes. in for the rest of yes of yes. your life just throw a softball if you want to do shit some shit like that you know what i'm saying like right just hit a right. softball Have the bubble break or into yeah, or no. or just just go into the uh, the doctor room with your wife and actually yeah. look and just ask the doctor what the gender is. No need, no need for no need, and just kind of have that nice little moment with your family, mm -hmm. uh, not on social media, not yep. with the world. You don't always. Here's another thing, and I say it all the time. You know, you don't always need a, an audience for everything. You don't. You, know you really I mean? don't. Yeah. There's some. some things that we can keep the audience out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Would be great. It would be great. Uh, James, it'll be great to have you back in studio. You're, you're heading oh back tonight. Um, and uh, the Ross Patterson Revolution set is built. So it's done. Ah! Yes. Uh, oh my gosh, it it so is all excited. done. Uh, Giorgio has it rigged up. We got to get some lights over there, Giorgio. But uh, everything else is done. So I think this week, what do you think, Giorgio, this week we'll be able to go live from that set? Tomorrow, he hopes. Ooh, that's, a, that's ambitious. 
Giorgio. That is ambitious, my man. Mics will work, but we need lights and. Uh... All right, all right. He's, Giorgio, he's Giorgio, saying this don't week. make. Tell him not to make the same mistake I make, which is to over promise under deliver yeah. we need him i just t- in life in life dude try and under promise over deliver say just three weeks it if it's tomorrow say three weeks then i'll yep. never get mad and at we'll anything be like, oh we'll be so surprised that it's in two days for everyone three days. yeah for everyone I, yeah. I i know why though like i've lived a life of non-stop deadlines that i've never ever missed including uh the time i went to the hospital but uh you know that's just say three weeks at that point you know what i'm saying right Right. Uh, three weeks um and the book cover's done for the new saint james book by the way uh super amped about that uh pre-sales will go looks like towards the end of the month um and it'll be available at thanksgiving uh i'm wrapping up the last edit as we speak and uh it should be up and available by the end of the month fun times ahead indeed go to ross patterson revolution on itunes rate us a five star and give us a quick review it really helps move us on up the charts Jabes, looking forward to having you back in the studio on the new set. For Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. The Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. This is The Revolution. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon.